Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. We got another update video for the Tarkov, Tarkov Halloween event for you guys. Uh, there's a lot to cover. It seems to be changing every day, so it's gonna be hard to stay right up to speed with this as we get the videos done, but I'm gonna cover basically Friday morning and Saturday morning stuff with this video um, and get you guys up to speed with all of the stuff, zombie quests, the whole nine yards, news, patches, uh, some quest guides. It'll all be bookmarked so you can get to what you need. Um, but let's not yammer anymore and uh, get you guys to the information. Okay, so first up, Friday morning. It's older information, but it's important to some stuff that's going on in the game. We got this th this tweet from BSG. It says, attention all citizens, the state of emergency has been declared in Norvinsk region uh, in relation to the biological disaster inside one of the regional medical facilities. High risk contamination outdoors. Avoid firing on uninfected people. Uh, and then if you look at the picture, there's a note in Russian here. And thanks to... Uh, Midnight Lyrics, who does translations for me, which is amazing. This is what we know, and it's from Fence, so keep that in mind. While those infected are everywhere, I announce a truce to everyone. Don't attack our own guys, but if they rock the boat, kill them. So, uh, basically, this means that scavs uh, are not aggro to PMCs. Regular scavs just chill. It, unless you shoot them, then they shoot back. Uh, but this applies to bosses as well. So, for example, Rashala or Killa, Gluhar, whatever. They are non-aggro to players until you shoot them. Now with this, when they activated this event uh, Friday morning, what we saw was the entire map became infected. You know, the lab was 100%, ground zero, 80, 80, 70. Customs was infected. It isn't now, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, so all the other maps have infection and it's growing. Um, for example, Shoreline and stuff was, I think, 50% yesterday. It bumped up a little bit. Streets and Ground Zero were like 70 or maybe Ground Zero was 80, but Streets was 70 and it bumped up. So they are increasing a little bit after uh, all, but there's zombies on all the maps now. And with that, we got some other things that are going on. The boss rates were turned down pretty low. Uh, the goons and stuff were like down to like five, six, seven percent I can't remember with, along with some of the other bosses. They're still there, but they're not very common. Rogues are still there, but they don't always spawn in the full number. There might only be two or three of them, and they might be somewhere weird. And I'm hearing reports, same thing with raiders, that they spawn in, but they might be frozen in place. They don't move. I can't tell you 100% that there are or there aren't rogues or raiders. I have not seen them myself, and I haven't seen video proof of them, but there is enough anecdotal uh, reports from the community that they... I do believe they are still around. They're just really rare. We also did get two more tasks with this, but those will be at the end of the video. We'll put the task guides at the end of the video. Um, we'll go through all four of them because we're getting two a day, um, but we'll do that there. Next up, we got a patch. Uh, so, and you've probably got an update and this had some issues, some good stuff in it. Um, first up, they fixed an issue that caused incorrect experience points to be awarded when turning in quests and traders. So for a couple of days, whenever you turned in a quest, you didn't, or a task, you did not get any uh, XP, the reward XP. You still got your raid XP, but you didn't get the reward. And I guess it didn't always not work, but sometimes it didn't work. And anyways, this has been patched so you can turn in your tasks again if you've been holding off on that. They also said they fixed an issue that caused a delay in issuing quests by Lightkeeper if the player died during the raid. So I can't test this and I can't get Lightkeeper yet because I need to kill raiders on labs, which I can't do. Uh, but talking to some folks, they feel like this has been fixed. It'll be a couple of days before we know 100% sure that it's been fixed or there's not any other bugs. But if you have Lightkeeper, hopefully you can start doing your tasks, tasks on the 10 hour timer now and not have to jump through nine hoops and play, basically play a Jaeger task to get your uh, your Lightkeeper tasks. There was a hard lock that was caused with players that were interacting with the sorting table that was addressed. Fix the display of streamer mode while viewing a player's profile in the raid loading screen. Doesn't matter to a lot of you guys, it's streamer mode. Uh, I don't know if it's actually been fixed though, because I still see a couple of streamers that their names are showing up. I'll play around with this later, but they, they're at least trying to get it addressed. Fix the order of currency display on the flea market offer creation screen. This was just a UI thingy, nothing big. Some of you might not have even noticed it. I barely did. So I didn't notice it until somebody pointed it out to me and then, then I couldn't help but see it. But two in-game quests are now available for players. Matter of technique and find the source. This is weird that they put it in the patch notes because um, this is just the stuff they're doing every day, but whatever. Uh, the following infection levels have been set for, this, for the locations, 100% labs, 80% on ground zero, Streets of Tarkov is 80%, Woods 70, Factory 70, Interchange 70, Reserve 65, Lighthouse 60, Shoreline 60, Customs 0%. The location has been cleared of infected by Rashal and his guards. So this is where we get into the thing where uh, Customs is clear of zombies now and Rashala is 100% spawn right. He is there every raid, but he is friendly like all the other scavs. So you can go to Customs if you want to get away from zombies, but just be warned, Customs is going to be a PvP madhouse. If you shoot a shot and are loud, 
you are going to have PMCs. They're going to be looking for blood, man. That's what's going to be going on here. So keep that in mind that customs is clear of zombies, but it's still going to be a shit show just in a different way. And then lastly, they reduced the number of infected on the lab by 25%, which I think is kind of a good deal. It should help with the performance a little bit. And if you weren't running a team, they're it was pretty hard to get through labs because there was a lot of zombies there okay next up this is something we did i did a little bit of testing online uh or offline to figure out some of the hit points on these zombies because we were noticing we were like okay this ammo sometimes one taps but it doesn't so do they have armor do they have different hit point pools did a bunch of testing this is what i figured out basically there are three hit point pools that i could figure out with the zombies you have zombies that move fast you have zombies that have pistols and then you have zombies that move slow. They fall into three groups. The fast zombies have 70 hit points on their head, 200 hit points on their thorax. The pistol zombies have 80 hit points on their head and 349 on their thorax. I know a weird number. I don't know why they didn't go with 350, but they did and it's 349. Uh, and then the slow zombies, the ones that are really just don't move very quick, they have 100 hit points on their head and uh, 350 on their thorax. Like I said here, there may be more variants, but this is all I found in testing. There's lots of people saying, yeah, well, I shot him 30 times in the head and he didn't die. So they've got 200 health on the, I don't, I'm not gonna listen to any of that bullshit until somebody goes in and does the testing like I did and shows a screen that shows exactly how much hit point they have. The problem with online game, the online side of this is the servers are struggling. The zombies warp around, the hit registration's an issue. There's so many things that go on in an online raid that it's nearly impossible to get good examples of this. So willing to accept that there's more hit point pools out there if I see proof of it, but until then, I'm sticking with this. To point this out, I wanna remind everybody that this is roughly what the hitboxes look like. This is confusing to folks and it, it, it makes sense because this is what the hitboxes look like that apply your hit point pool. So this orange box up here, this is where all of the hitboxes are that apply to your thorax hit point pool. Down here are all of the, the different hitboxes that whether it's groin or stomach or side or whatever, that all apply to the stomach hit point pool. And the reason this is confusing is because our little character model on the top left when we get shot, its sizes are the opposite of this. You know, the, the stomach hitbox little example is tiny and the thorax is huge. So it throws people's heads off on what they think where they're hitting somebody. So you gotta make sure you're hitting high enough to be hitting the thorax and not stomach when you're shooting the zombies, which is difficult, but this is why sometimes zombies can feel like they take a lot more damage because they can, they have a shitload of hit points. I think I didn't do total testing, but I want to say they have something like 1200 hit points. Um, so it is a lot. Now with this, I want to talk about two other things. One is the Zagustin, whether this is an intended effect or not, I don't know, but the Zagustin and the perf, uh, the blue blood, the Perfatorin, they stop, they prevent bleeds, right? Stops and prevents bleeds, stops and prevents bleeds. If you have one of these active, you will not get infected. At least that's what we've seen. Again, I don't know if this is intended, if it's an oversight by BSG. We haven't seen anything that indicates in the, the lore of the stuff that, that this is how it's supposed to work, um, but it just might be that way. So if you're running around with zombies, bring Zagustans with you or bring Blue Bloods and keep them on. Um, yes, they do screw with your metabolism and stuff like that, but it will prevent you, as long as it's active, the 180 seconds will prevent you from getting the um, infection. It will not cure it. It will not stop it once you have it, but it can prevent you from getting it. Now on to bullets. I just want to do a quick example of this because a lot of people are asking questions about what they're working. There are tons of bullets that'll work for killing zombies. These are the ones that we've had the most luck with as far as consistency, how you can carry with mags and weapons that they operate in. So first off, Ultra Nozzler. 107 damage so this will always one tap a zombie every zombie in the head will one tap by this as long as you're not too far away obviously bullet damage and pen drops as the bullet travels distance um but that's another discussion a tcw great for killing almost all of the zombies at least the ones that are threatening um slow zombies aren't that big of a deal they're usually pretty easy to deal with it's the ones that move quickly and the pistol ones that are pain in the ass and they have under 80 uh hit points so even tcwsp will do that uh, rip ammo super performance and csp these are great because they all can two hit all of them in the thorax so two shots from these and the zombie goes down dead as again assuming you're hitting the thorax hitbox with those so those are three good shotgun shells to look at uh geska and fmj you can run uh the, the vpo 215 vpo 209 that's what i was trying to think of uh the 366 ak if you will 
Uh, I've seen guys running this with great effect on the zombies because these a these ammos do so much damage. They one hit most of them in the head. Uh, it takes just two, it takes, you know, two to three shots to kill them in the chest or obviously if you're using FMJ. Uh, I guess it's four for both of them. Either way, pretty effective, uh, cheap ammo, cheap gun. Uh, so keep that in mind that those are available. Next up is PS12B. I did like using this, but I run in a squad usually. So I'm just helping clear zombies. I'm not doing it by myself. Obviously the Ash 12 has small mags. If you run out of ammo in the mag, the reload animation is really slow. Um, and you can use PS12 or PS12A, which are higher damage. But the, the thing that I liked about PS12B is it's an ammo that I can use both for PVP and killing zombies. It'll one tap them all in the head and I can still kill players relatively uh, consistently with it, which there's not a lot of ammos that you can do this with. In fact, I think this might be about one of the only ones that's good for both killing zombies and PVE both or I'm sorry, PVP bolt. After that, another really popular one I've seen um, is the 300 Blackout Whisper round, shooting this out of the MCX, uh, 90 damage, so pretty good at killing most of the zombies with headshots, enough damage that you can put them down in the chest pretty quick. You can throw 60 or even 100 round magazines in an MCX, uh, but it does, MCXs, their durability gets chewed through pretty quick. Uh, you can run it loud if you want. I'd suggest not running loud. It does bring more zombies towards you. Suppressed uh, has a problem with overheating, all of that, but it is there. Uh, one of the more popular rounds I've seen. Also, Quake Maker and Rip, lots of SMGs. These uh, these work great. Um, obviously, Rip ammo works better because it's 102 damage. Uh, the Quake Maker is 85. Uh, the big thing here is that these rounds are just kind of limited and they've gotten very expensive. Uh, what I have gotten into doing is actually running a pistol with these ammos in them as just as I because I've been running the, the M60 a lot just for fun uh but some of the other guns whether I'm doing that I almost always have a pistol with me and that's just so you have something to switch to quickly if you run out of ammo or you get pushed or you know whatever it's just a backup and it's worked pretty good uh, a lot of people have been talking about how much they like the 30 R37F again 98 damage so it's really good at killing um, both the, the fast zombies and the pistol zombies, one tap to the head. You can throw it in a 5.7 or a P90 and have pretty good effect with it. Not as popular, but I have been seeing it is people running like RDs or AKs uh, with uh, 7.62 by 39 HP, simply because you can buy an absolute gobstop amount of the ammo. You can buy 1200 rounds at a time. So you can bring in three or 400 on you. The gun is pretty cheap. The mags are pretty cheap. Everything about it is inexpensive and it still is a fully automatic weapon that you could have an extra, you could bring extra mags with, um, you know, PP or BP and throw those in if you run into players and switch really quick if you want to do that. Uh, lastly, and pretty much leastly is Warmage. It is effective as well at 88 damage, but M4s are expensive. This isn't, in my opinion, one of the best ways to use it, but you do you, it is another ammo. So I just wanted to mention it. So these are the ammos that uh, we have found effective at taking out the zombies obviously there's more there any ammo that's over probably 80 80 damage 85 damage is going to work for you so just keep that in mind okay so this morning saturday morning we get another tweet from bsg and it has to do with over the past 24 hours epidemic outbreaks were reported across the entire territory leave the dangerous areas immediately we get this note pretty sure it's from therapist again midnight lyrics translating for me here according to my sources there was some sort of virus being made in a secret section of the lab i need samples to create a vaccine Bring them to me. People in Tarkov would be grateful to you, same as I will. Key. Which is pretty sure it's therapists. I'm, I'm not going to get into the details of that. I just trust the people that are telling me that it, the implication is pretty clear that it's therapists. And what this leads to is the second set of tasks for therapists. And we'll get into those. This will be the task guide section now. So we did a video already for tasks number one and two for the first day. This is task three and four for the second day. Three is really straightforward and simple. You quite literally have to eliminate 50 infected on any location. Maybe easier said than done, but you can do it anywhere. We did it on streets or labs. Uh, you can get it done in a single raid if you can survive. Once you do that, you come back, you turn it in, then you get your next task. And that is the root cause. And again, this comes from therapist. Uh, and this means you have to go back to the labs for this. Uh, what she needs is a vial. And it's got a lot of locations. Uh, the wiki's got them listed if you want them there. I'm gonna load into an offline raid and walk through all of them for you guys to show you kind of where they're all at. Uh, the vial looks, it's kind of unique looking. Um, let me get a full size image here so you guys can see what it looks like. It, it, it It's very similar to think Resident Evil kind of style vial. We've not had an, an item like this in the game before. Um, so it does stand out. Okay, so we're at the entrance here. You're gonna come into the lab. 
turn, uh, turn power on so you can get back to the back door. And you are, first place we're gonna go look is in the side office right here, where we've been in here for some other stuff. Now there's four spawns in here. Uh, the first one is gonna be in this vial rack right here. It can actually be like in the back. My laser is not doing a very good job of shining on it, but kind of in the back, like right there. The second place it can be is right here, sitting on the side. And then the plan, this is where I actually found it. It was in the fridge. I believe it was on this shelf, the top one right there, but it might be one down. I can't remember exactly. Uh, so that the three spawns in here, sorry. I said four, but it was three. Now from here, uh, you go into the next close room. There are uh, two spawns in here that I have been told about. One of them was in the vial rack uh, or near one of the vial racks, which I didn't see a photo of it. I'm just trying to find the vial rack. I think they're talking this thingy there. And then the other one was uh, on this end of the table, I think by the sink, but I don't have any pictures of it. And I don't have any examples. So be look all over for it. Again, it's pretty big. You're just gonna have to look around in here. I would come here last since we don't have specific pictures or check the wiki and see if they do get them updated. And then as you come out of this one, you're gonna come all the way back here and there's another spawn back here. It should be near this vial rack right here uh, is the other spawn. Now there could be more spawns. If you don't find them in any of these five places, you're just gonna have to look around. That's the best info I have so far for this. I wish I could give you more. The wiki always gets updated with more if they show up. So if you're having a hard time finding it, go check the wiki out. And just like the blood samples, once you get that, you've got to get out of raid, survive uh, to get uh, the quest completed. Okay, so now we're on to the quests from Saturday morning. There's two of them here. The first one being uh, the matter of technique. This one comes from mechanic. You have to take a thumb drive and plant it on streets. Now, the problem is this thumb drive is the flash drive with special software. This is something that you have to craft in your hideout, which if you're like me, turns into a problem. So when you accept the task from mechanic, the matter of technique, the initial equipment is it unlocks the craft for the flash drive with special software. Now that's great and all, except your hideout requires you to be not crafting anything. It's this craft right here. I think it's like 15 minute craft. Um, it's pretty short uh, and it just takes a secure flash drive, a regular one, which those might have gone up in price. Um, oh, they did, wow. Uh, but it, you craft that, you turn it, you it becomes a special item. You can take that into raid and you have to plant it. The problem is I have 18 hours before I can do it. A workaround for this is you can get a buddy to craft it for you. You can drop one of these per raid. That's what this little number right here means. Cannot be discarded in a raid more than one. Uh, something that can't be discarded in raid at all has no numbers here. Just a little bit of information for you on it. So you can have a friend craft it for you and turn it in. It's not on the flea market. It doesn't show up. Um, it just shows up. This, this is the secure flash drive. The, the one that you need for the task is not sellable or anything like that. So try to get a friend. I I suggested to BSG um, on, the social, on their socials to try and add like a barter or something. You know, throw a barter in there. So mechanic at mechanic so that you can, you don't have to have the craft open so people don't have to wait. Uh, if they don't have somebody to give them one. Okay, so you have your thumb drive. Now you need to go into streets uh, to plant this thumb drive, essentially, to finish this quest. You don't need any keys for it. Um, I'll show you specifically where you got to go. It's on the north end of the map at the Terra Group office. Okay, so here we are. We're middle of the map. We're all the way at the middle of the street, the main intersection, you know, the little subway thing. That is Pinewood. Uh, here's the mall, uh, Cardinal, the little, I, we call it the corner build, the corner ammo building. Lexos is down that way. Uh, we're headed to the Terra Group building, which is, oh, almost died of fire. Headed to the Terra Group building, which is right up here. Okay, so when you're up here, the Terra Group building, the sign, that building is actually closed. You're gonna come to the one on the left of it, right here, uh, where you have this kind of rainbow sign. And you're gonna come inside, go in the front door, and you're gonna go immediate right, and then left and then this door right here and you come in i don't have one on me so i can't plant it right now but there's you don't have to like go up to a computer or anything you just have to get in here and it'll let you kind of plant it in the middle of the room and that's it that's all you got to do okay so you've got mechanics quest done you turned in your deal now it's time to do therapist task find the source she wants you to go back to labs um and you need to get into the key carded room uh that i told you in previous guides that if you find the key hang on to it you might get lucky with this too because with this being a quest now it might be opened every raid hard to say uh but i'll walk through how to find the key where you got to go all of that basically you got to get in there you got to get a book you got to get out with it you got to give it back to the therapist so let's get into here we're at the, the the new area come in you know hit your button over here to uh turn the power on and the key spawns are going to be back in here 
Um, the spawns that I have been able to determine are gonna be, one is inside this coffee cup right here on this room as you come in the left. The other one is gonna be underneath this little placard thing here, this little calendar, Doohickey jig, I think is what that is, uh, would be another one. After that, you come into the next room and this is where it's actually at in this offline raid is right here, is underneath this uh, chess piece that I think is a reference to Resident Evil. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but uh, right there is the, uh, I just picked it up there. It can also be in, I don't know what this device centrifuge thingy, maybe is that what that is right there? It can be sitting right on that thing and it can be kind of hard to see. So you got to get right up there, make sure you don't get a dot. Also, it can be right here on this little shelf, uh, right where my laser is pointing is right there. And then the last two kind of known spots are going to be back here. One of them is going to be on the table right there. And then the other one is supposedly uh, back here on the whiteboard on this back where the markers are at. Um, that is the spots that are listed. I have run labs and checked all of those spots and not found it. So I don't know if it doesn't spawn every raid or it has another spawn. Either way, uh, that's where it's at. So you get your key card. If you already have it, you don't even have to go back here. You come to the residential unit seven. Oh, I forgot to mention the key card can spawn right here on this chair as well. Uh, I have found it there. So you can get lucky and have it right there and just turn around. You got to open this up with the residential unit. It's one of the two uses that it has, and you can see, uh, open it up. And then the item is gonna be a couple places in here. Once you're inside, it's a pretty quick look. The bed on the left, right underneath the pillow, it would be right there uh, underneath the pillow. After that, right left of the desk, and it'll be leaned up right here against this. It's a little diary book. It'll be leaned right up against here. Next up is gonna be under the desk. You're gonna look right there for it. And then the last place is actually gonna be under the bed. So you'll have to come up underneath here like this and look up and it'll be i think it's over here actually and then that's the spawn spots that i know of uh, i don't know if there's any others um so that hopefully helps you get the book okay task guys out of the way three other kind of random things i want to bring up and mention for you tagilla is running around all of the maps i believe as a zombie so it's zombie tagilla which means he has a scythe i think his hit points are turned down a little bit um but he's still pretty scary goofy looking guy and he will still shoot you he doesn't just melee he, he does shoot guns as well zombie scavs can also be used for tasks uh specifically for us this turned into a really really handy thing to do some of the uh proper tasks so some of the quests the tasks that we got done were uh, the Garamindir tasks, whatever you want to call them. We got uh, District Patrol, and I don't know where the other one is. Oh, yeah, tickets, please. We just drug zombies to the areas that you needed to do them and killed them, and they counted. So tasks that require scavs, pretty easy to do right now with the zombie horde that's running around. And then the last thing I want to bring up is something I didn't realize is the pumpkins. In the past, these pumpkins just have candy and crap in them, so it didn't matter. That is not the case anymore. They can have some pretty wild stuff. I bought a bunch of these just to kind of show you guys. We'll, we'll unpack them here. Let me, uh, I'm going to sell all this ammo to just get it out of the way. And uh, we'll uh, we'll unpack and see what we get out of these various pumpkins. Just kind of do a an unpacking, if you will. I don't know what it is. I bought them. That's a new, that's a bug that I hope they fix where stuff you can't sell it. I don't know what that is, but anyways, uh, we'll get all these sold and we'll make some room and we'll unpack these. Uh, first, one thing I want to mention though, is the contents maintain the status of the container. So if you have a found and raid pumpkin, the items inside are found and raid. If you have a non found and raid pumpkin, the items are not found and raid. doesn't matter for resale, obviously right now, but it does matter if you want to get items for quest items, which You'll see here in a sec why that can matter. All right, so let's start on open. Let's start unpacking these. Actually, let me get these things out of the way so we don't actually think that they're part of it too. Um, we know exactly what is what. Okay, so we'll unpack this one. What do we get? We get a parrot and a sugar. Pretty good. Uh, would be handy if you need a parrot for something, right? Second one, we get a fire steel and a electronic components. Then we get a ooh, a wrench and a cat. I'm just going to move this stuff that is whatever off out of the way. Uh, next one we get, we get a cat and a teapot. Then we got a military tube and a sugar. I guess chocolate's worth a lot too, huh? Uh, let's kind of move this stuff around here. Oh yeah, there's a couple of chocolates. I should grab those because those are still worth like, what are those worth? Like 40k a piece. Things are getting a little cheaper because of this, obviously. Uh, next one, we get an egg and a sugar. Um, some chocolate bars. And then we get another sugar and a chocolate bar. Then I kind of hoping I was going to get something really good, like a graphics card, but I don't know if I will. Cat in a vase. 
Then we get a... Ooh, a fuel conditioner. That'd be handy if you need a fuel conditioner if it was found underage, right? Uh, more chocolate and sugar. And then the last one we'll unpack and we get... Oh, we didn't really get anything out of that one, it doesn't look like. Give us some drinks and a kvass, maybe? That one was kind of a ripoff. But to show you guys the found and raid status, here, I'll, uh, I'll pull this one down. Let's kind of stack this stuff up so you guys can see. This will give you found and raid items, CPU, like that. So if you have a found and raid one, it'll give you found and raid items that you can use for tasks. Uh, so keep that in mind, pumpkins aren't completely worthless. Uh, they're probably not for the most part. I mean, it's a pretty big gamble. Um, they're, they're, they cost like uh, 200K, um, I think, give or take. They probably go up and down uh, 200, 215, maybe a little bit cheaper. Probably not worth that, um, other than the gamble side of it. If you got a bunch of money, you want to open a bunch of them up, sure. Uh, but taking them out of raid, they're definitely worth it because we were getting chocolates and sugars pretty frequently. Um, and, you know, a sugar's worth, what, 90K? Uh, 80, 90K and a sugar. So you're 120K just from getting those and then if you get some of these other items it could really ramp that up so they're kind of heavy they are a four slot but and but they are worth taking out um even if you just want to sell them on the flea market i hate doing this i don't like spreading things like this but it is what it is and it's pretty well known out there if you right click and let's say you add this to a favorite list add it to your wish list like other when you pick up a pumpkin if it has that item inside of it you will get the little alert in the bottom right corner of your screen so you can set it to a graphics card. You could set it to other stuff like that. So that way, you know, if you get one in that pumpkin and you want to get out of raid, you know that you have it. So set some items like graphics cards or some high-end items like that so that you know that you need them. And if you pick up a pumpkin, you'll know it's in there. So there's that. There's that little glitch uh, exploit, whatever you want to call it. But that's all I got for you guys. The video was kind of long, but there's a lot of good information here. I hope it helps you with the zombie event. Still no idea how long it's going to last. Just going to keep chugging along with it, enjoying it while I can. I like it. I think the story's cool. It won't last forever. Uh, Tarkov will be back to normal before you know it. And hopefully it leads to another Chronicles of Rigi episode because that really furthers the story that we've all been waiting for. But we'll wrap her up there. As always, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate having you around. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. Helps me out a ton. Tells YouTube that you want to watch more of my content and it doesn't cost you a dime. Wish you guys the best of luck in your raids, especially with the spooky time and the zombies. And we'll see you in turn.